Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Let's continue on this 2001 military Humvee. As you've seen before, we did get the hubs done. They look really good. Those doors got powder coated. We're gonna powder coat a few more items and keep throwing this thing together and hopefully get that diff in too. Let's go to work. All right, guys, I gotta take a small break from the Humvee because I've gotta go replace the front hub assembly on the Escalade. I swear, as soon as those things get about 100,000 miles, those things start going. All the hub, wheel bearing stuff. So it's gonna be the driver's side front of the Escalade. I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out. Then I'll jump back on the Humvee, but I gotta get this done today. And I just went to O'Reilly. Comes with the ABS sensor, that's cool, wheel sensor. Um, Master Pro, not too bad. They are expensive. But, I mean, come on, GM. But, huge shout out to Rally. They always hook me up. Ha! Check this out. You hear that? Yep. So, I've been driving it, and Tara's really good about saying, hey, something's wrong with my car. It's making a funny sound over here. I'm like, all right. So, I'm driving it, and it's bad. But it's so bad that you really can't tell because it's like hitting below your feet, like underneath the pedals. I'm like, it has to be the driver's side. And then I sat on the passenger side. I'm like, man, I think it's coming from the passenger side. So lo and behold, it is the driver's side. Okay, I'm done with the Escalade. Drives perfect. All that noise and all that junk is gone. Drives great. So back on the Humvee. Man, I've been sitting here. I was just looking at these while I was working. And my little window cover here, the little door covers for the hubs, they look good, man. They look really, really good. Powder coated that color. And that is Smoke Gray from Columbia Coatings. I'll drop the, I'll leave the description down below. So back on the Humvee, we either got the steering linkage that we could do next and go ahead and put that on, or we can do the front diff, sand it down, paint it, all that good stuff. I've got all the hardware sitting right there, ready for this thing to go back on. And we can give this thing a powder coating try again on the pumpkin cover. Uh, we'll see. The other one turned out not good. I'm going to have to sand it back down. All right, so you guys see all of this oil discoloration right in here? So we do have a faulty seal on this one and that's why we're replacing all this stuff. Break it all the way down and build it all the way up. Right here is all the seal kits. Four over here, one, two, three, blue up, new star washers and everything. So, hey, do it, do it right, I guess, right? Let's get the sand in some more. This stuff's bad. All right, we're all sanded up. Whole diff, lots of wire brush, lots of sandpaper, but it, lo it looks good to go. So we're gonna wipe it down and spray it. Let's go. All right, it's good and dry. Let's go ahead and change out these seals.
Hey, thanks for helping me get the hood off over there. Uh, what's wrong with it? Yeah. No more clear coat whatsoever. Thanks, GM. But, yeah, we're going to hook it up real quick. And I can do some cleaning in here. So we got the hood off. I'm going to go grab the sawhorses, give this thing a little sand, and shoot it. So this video is going to bounce around just a little bit from the Humvee. So I've got the... Bam. It's on some sawhorses. Get the sand in. I got... It's, it's a little cold right now. Let it warm up a little bit. We're going to go ahead and shoot this thing. And we'll get back on the Humvee. All right. I got my block. 400, 600. Let's go. I just gave this thing a quick bath just to clean it up because I don't want her taking it to an automatic car wash in the next, I don't know, two weeks, let that thing dry. So I'm waiting on the hood to dry, waiting on this to, well, I don't have to do anything. The other two pieces are right here that I'm gonna be painting and I gotta run to the dentist. I'll be right back and we'll shoot these things. All right, I'm all set up. Let's spray that and that in and be done with this car. Move back to the Humvee. Let's go. These things are done and they look good man that hood turned out great it's got a little bit of trash you can kind of see some specs right here but it's gonna be some buffing but it's no big deal you're gonna get that when you're painting in a shed but man that thing looks good so much better than it looked before all right guys it is the next day here and we're gonna go ahead and finish this thing up real quick the parts have been in there they dried all night and we'll go ahead and throw them on the car be done with this and get back on the humvee Let's put them on. All right, guys, so we got the hood. It looks really good, other than need to be cut and buffed. Uh, sorry for my neighbor's dog. That's the one that's always barking. Um, we got some orange peel going on right here. That's what happens when you paint in the shed, like I was just saying before. So we got that done. This bottom piece right here on the step tread. And we got this front piece right here. It looks really good. So I I'm pleased with it. And guys, last but not least, we got this beautiful piece right here done. It looks absolutely amazing. And that piece goes right here. It's the top of the suspension. At least I got one of them knocked out during with the, while I was doing the Escalade, but I'll see if I can get the rest done. As soon as I get the old sand cabinet fixed, I did get my metering valve, check it out. So guys, this is the metering valve that I got actually off a fellow YouTuber. Uh, I was just doing some research on this and this was kind of the best. Uh, I, I noticed his design on this, which you get more of a flow instead of the ones that taper down and they get smaller. It kind of restricts the airflow of the media. And I do like the way the valve is on this one. So uh, I just got to drill a hole in there and then put, I guess it's like an inch and a half. And yeah, drill a hole or widen the hole that exists under there. Put this underneath it and clamp this down to it, to the little door that flaps down at the bottom where the media comes out. And that's that. So we'll see how it goes and this changes anything. It should. All right guys, it is the next morning here and it is pouring outside. So outside's kind of scratched off right now, but we do got some stuff I can do in here. And let's put those control arm bushings in the new piece that we just got painted on the Humvee. Let me show what that's about and go from there. So right here, 
boom. All new bushings. It's almost $400 for these. So every control arm, every bushing, let's pull this out. There you go. And I do believe you have to press them in or I'm going to hit them with the sledgehammer, I guess, with a piece of wood. Uh, we'll find out. But let's go ahead and throw two of these into this part right here and go ahead and hang it back on the Humvee. Let's go. And by the way, all these bushings are the same. You can see the numbers on them. So there's nothing, you can't mess it up. They're all the same, all the way around. So here's the bushing. And remember, they go from the outside in, not the inside out. It's gonna be a tight fit. Put a little grease. Hold up. Okay, never mind this. Gee whiz. So this little outer ring, and it still has the sleeve inside, is it is, it is this metal part on the outside. Now that I think about it, when I pushed out the bearing, only the rubber came out with that center piece right here. So this outer sleeve is still in there. Great, absolutely great. So this is the one I don't want to mess up because I just painted it. I had no idea. I guess I haven't looked at the bushings enough to know that when I did press them out, I just pressed out the rubber on the inside instead of pressing out that little thin outer sleeve. And they're on there. They're not coming out. I didn't put it, I'll put them in the press first with a socket that was kind of almost there and it just wasn't working out. Then my brain's like, hey, why don't you just cut it? So what I did, you saw I made a slit all the way down just with the sawzall and then just take a flathead screwdriver and when where it broke at, just give it a whack, just one hard tap and it's gonna fold in a little bit and you can just tap it out. So they actually, I thought I was screwed when this started to happen. I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna get all these out? And now I got 16 to do. Well, I only got 14 to do now because I just got those two out on the other, on the lower side of this side. But let's try to get this one out without damaging the paint. We'll see. I am sweating. I hope I didn't scratch it up too bad. Definitely chewed it up a little bit right here. So word to the wise, take these out before painting them. I just didn't know they were in there. So guys, I got good news and bad news. Good news, I did get it out. Look at this thing, look how mangled that is. I beat on this thing for an hour and 15 minutes with a sledgehammer and screwdrivers. I sacrificed a whole bunch of cheap screwdrivers that I had laying around, because I know I was gonna break them. Um, even my big one, I have a big cobalt screwdriver. I broke it too. But you know what, I wish I'd have known this sooner, but hopefully this will help you guys out. So if, you're due, if you are changing the bushings, Make sure this sleeve comes out, it's so tiny. So the best way to do it was to cut it with the Sawzall right down the center and try not to go too deep and you hit, start hitting inside here. But the bad news is I did ruin the paint job on the new one that I had just painted and it was so beautiful. It is not anymore, this thing is trashed. Look, I mean, it, I had no choice. Once I started seeing it chip and rub off, I was like, you know what, I don't care. And I just beat the crap out of this thing with the sledgehammer. And it finally came out. But uh, I wish I had a noon sooner. Hopefully it'll help you one of you guys out though. 
But we do got four of them done. This whole driver rear, the bushing sleeves are out. So I've still got all the rest to do. I am not doing those right now because that, that wore me out. That, that did me in for right now. I need a break. All right, how to go change shirts. Anyways, boom. Got the hole drilled. This is the bottom of the media cabinet from the Harbor Freight one. And this is the media valve. So I went ahead and took the step bit from the drill here. Drilled a small hole first and ran this all the way out to an inch and a half. Or maybe just slightly under an inch and a half. And then went ahead and put this on here. Washer, nut, tighten it down. Boom, this thing's ready to go back on. And down here, this is where the media will actually come out if you ever want to drain it. So I'm just going to put this back on. Go ahead and put this door back on the cabinet and go from there. Start running these hoses. All right, I'm on my way to Lowe's right now because I needed uh, five foot of that tubing that's going to go for the gun for the sand cabinet. So I'm going to run over there and swap out a few tools that I have that are broke laying around. Uh, some craftsman ones. And um, see you guys back at the house. Okay, they didn't have the clear flex tubing that was this size unbelievable come on Lowe's all they had it in was this I hope it's not too stiff like I can still use the gun up in there and I got a rubber garment for when I cut a hole in the side and I can then seal it up real good let's get this brake line and back installed send it down the T fittings and everything can't believe I even got this one loose. It was crazy. Well, we're working late in the night and let's get started and put this dip together. All right, guys, so we got it torqued down. Huge shout out to my son. My goodness, I couldn't have done it without him because I end up having this bar and this bar right here. I had them on the wrong side. So these holes are just slightly off center just a little bit. And that's that way for a purpose. So the, it needs to be, the hole needs to be closer to the outsides 
of these. And it, it didn't look like from the naked eye that it was going to make a difference, but it will not line back up in these slots without these being on the correct side. So they're back there, but he really hooked me up and helped me out. So all the, they're not torqued yet. I do got them all tight. Right here is where the brake line goes through. So tight, 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 all these. And got the, went ahead and put this front mount on right here. So these are tight and these that run through the bottom, they're all good to go. So the front diff is in. All right guys, so that's a wrap for today's video. We've been working hard as crap today and we worked through 10 to the night. I've been at this thing all day and doing a lot of powder coating behind the scenes that I didn't film. Uh, for instance, check this out. Like here's the yokes that go on where the brake rotors are gonna connect to. They look outstanding. So we've got a lot of that stuff done. A lot of small time consuming stuff and powder coating is very slow. And especially I'm having to give them probably two and three coats a piece and they're coating really good now, but hey, it takes time. But we got it done, we got both diffs in and we're just gonna move, keep moving right along from here and it should start to come together really soon, man. I'm really excited. So keep that post notifications on. Hit the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.